All right, guys, welcome back. So now that the um, all the transmission stuff is basically done, um, you know, I, I've got to order a, a throwout bearing and some random plugs and stuff like that. But other than that, a lot, you know, all the fabrication and stuff is done. So before I can bolt everything together and get the engine and transmission into the engine bay, I've got to finish this project that I started which is rewiring the engine management. So basically all I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm eliminating anything that isn't necessary to make the engine run. Um, the only things that will be in the harness is all the sensors and stuff, the powered solenoids and basically everything that, like I said, that the e ECU needs to make the engine go. Um, I figured the easiest way to do this is to connect everything to the engine and then just kind of work my way back towards the firewall. Alright, so I've got these, um, you yeah. know, soon. So anyway, so I've got these um, connectors. They're, uh, you know, like mill style, uh, quarter twist kind of connectors, you know, so uh, basically, and they're plastic. I thought they were metal, but they're like a um, carbon or a fiber impregnated metal or, or like one of those uh, composite plastic deals, the fiber impregnated like tool metal, like tool plastic, not metal. So but anyways, um, this will allow me to quickly disconnect the entire engine harness from the firewall. Then I can throw the harness over the engine and then remove the engine fairly easily. I won't have to disconnect a bunch of random harnesses and stuff. Then it'll make putting the engine back in. It'll just be Put the engine in, bolt it in, and then simple connect and twist, and engines connected. So I got two of them. One of them I'm going to run uh, all my power and grounds and stuff like that through. Well, it's not stuff like that, but my power and grounds through one, and then all my um, signal and stuff through the other one. So this is already proving to be a very tedious, very time-consuming job. I've done it once before. And halfway through, I just kind of said, screw it, I just want the car to run, and I didn't finish it. You know, I got it looking decent, but not great. So this time around, I am going to do it correctly and really minimize the harness and get kind of a, a full tuck, at least on the engine harness. So basically what I've got here is, like I said, I was just going to connect all the sensors and everything to the engine. So this is the harness for the distributor. Uh, this is the injector harness. Well, it's also, it's the, it's kind of like the main engine harness. So you've got the fuel injectors are connected to it. The VIX solenoids, which are deleted uh, right now. I got one of the lines for the VIX controls, the boost control solenoid. And the other one um, is the feed for my flex fuel sensor. Uh, and we've got, what else is there? Or something else. A couple of different temp sensors. Um, this car has a, it's kind of weird. So, you've got a temp sensor for a temp sensor for the gauge. You've got a temp sensor for the fan, and you have a temp sensor for the ECU. But all coolant temperature sensors, all from different areas of the block too. It's just kind of I mean they're all around the thermostat, but I don't know why they didn't just split the signal across the. But whatever. So. So we got that. Uh, we have our idle control harness. And then we have um, our uh, throttle positioning sensor harness. So that's basically it. There's a couple of other things. Um, there is the air temperature sensor. And I think that's really it. Uh, map is inside the ECU. It's actually just a vacuum line that goes to the ECU. So, so yeah, there's not really a whole lot necessary to make this engine run. Uh, but just just trying to clean this up and just trying to make it look nice is, uh, is the main thing. So basically I know whereabouts this is going to go to the firewall. Um, I'm going to have the entire harness kind of come wrap around up under the intake and it'll go through the firewall somewhere, somewhere back here. So that's the general idea of how I'm going to route this harness. So, the breakout of the harness is pretty simple. 
I did go ahead and I print printed the uh, schematics for engine management, and then I went ahead and I made myself a cheat sheet. So uh, these are basically all of the. I basically broke out all the things that control the engine into kind of like things. So you got um, all my power and stuff. It's kind of confusing. Let's let's go back here. All right, so. So basically I've got the ECU pin here, what each line is, and then uh, kind of where, here it's supposed to be where it's supposed to go, or where it came from, but I didn't really fill that in. So then I have my two connectors, and I'm just calling them connector 1, connector 2. So connector 1 is the, ECU is all the signal and sensors and inputs and outputs, connector 2 is power and ground. Of course, things that require power and a ground, like solenoids and uh, um, distributor or cam sensor and all that stuff that needs a reference and stuff like that. So basically what I did is, like I said, so ECU pin, what everything is, connector 1 and which pin I'm going to use on the new connector, connector 2 and which pin I'm going to use on that new connector. So and I kind of tried to... Uh, also label what each wire color was so that I could kind of identify it fairly easily. Uh, but yeah, a lot of pre-work that goes into something like that. So one thing that's common with most of these harnesses is this red, this white wire with a red stripe. This is the switch 12 volt and basically anything that needs to switch 12 volt gets connected to that. So the original harness had them all kind of wired together with this jumbled mess. I just went ahead and cut that out so that I could, because the way it was connected, it was like connected like mid harness. So I would have had to like, yeah, it was, it was just kind of weird. So, so my plan is to uh, extend them, extend these red and white wires so that they can meet further back in the harness so that all the harness gets, get a chance to come together at the same point and not at different areas so I can do I can sleeve it all to a certain point and then use one single sleeve for the remainder of the harness I may end up actually just doing all my power and ground through one through one connector cuz it's really not that many wires so um, I guess I'm gonna start with extending some of these wires uh, I don't know how much I'm actually going to record because, like I said, it's very tedious. kind of hard to see here. I'm trying to get this close. So I've got I've got the uh, all these kind of sleeved temporarily or permanently, I guess. Um, yeah. So anyways, I got these all sleeved. All of these have a red and white wire, so I figured this is a good spot to bring all the connectors, all these harnesses together. So I'll solder these uh, white and red wires together and then just have one thick red white wire or probably just use red since that's what I got and that will go to the uh, to the connector through a, a main this main trunk and this will also go to that and this will just form one main trunk that will go to that connector that's somewhere around here. I'm going to go ahead and 
get these attached. And then, uh, then yeah. Hey guys, what's going on? So, uh, still working on getting this harness put together. So I got my got my big lens on, so it's all zoomed in. But uh, it's for the sake of being able to show you what's going on here. So I got the harness mostly or all loomed up and everything. I just gotta finish the end of it. Um, right now, what I'm working on is crimping on these pins. If you can. See that. So yeah, I'm working on getting these pins crimped on because uh, I'm going to be using one of these bulkhead type connectors. So before the astute watchers, anyone that does any type of electrical work or anything like that, they'll notice I got the wrong connector. Um, typically what you want to do, you want your bulkhead to be a socket type like this and then your engine harness side to be the pin type like this and I have the opposite this bulkhead is um, yeah this bulkhead is the uh, the pin side but the reason why you want to have the bulkhead be the socket side is because this is the side that's going to be hot potentially you're gonna have power and this is what's connected to the ECM and things like that so what could happen with these exposed pins is if something were to lay across the pin, I know there's no pins in here now, but anyways, uh, if something were to lay across these pins while the battery was still connected, or even if the battery is not connected, you could short something out inside the ECM or something else inside the vehicle, which is why you typically want the socket side to be that side, because then the sockets are recessed and they're protected, and they're, it's less likely uh, to sort to short something out as opposed to having a, a bunch of exposed pins. So I thought about ordering new connectors. These are about 50 bucks a set. These are cheap. You know, these are the plastic ones. They're not the um, our composite, I should say. Um, but I was like, you know, uh, I'll just be careful. <laughs> Famous last words. Uh, I just the cost of these are pretty damn expensive. So you know, and I can't think of anything else to do with them. So. I'll just use it as is. So, right now, what I'm doing is I'm working on getting the sockets attached to the engine side harness. And I just kind of wanted to show you that process. So, this is one of the pins. This is actually a 12 gauge pin, 12 or 14. Wire goes on the short end. There's a little, see how. There's a little inspection window there. That's so that when your wire goes into the uh, when your wire goes in to the connector, so yeah, there's a little inspection window in there to uh, see your wire once it's inserted in. So I just kind of wanted to show you uh, how this works, how this whole process works. All right, so these are. A fairly expensive pair of crimpers. They're, uh, um, I don't know, you can find them used for about 300 bucks. So, the way these work, uh, there's the actual crimping die inside, or let me see if you can see those close up in there. You know, there's, there's eight little teeth in there that crimp the end. 
the end of this around the wire. So this little contraption on the back, uh, this is your, this is what holds the pin in place. So there's different, um, there's different, I guess you could call them dies or whatever for the pin that you're using. Locks that in place. So basically what that does is that when you take the pin and shove it into the you got a guy there, it holds it perfectly in place. Alright, so I'm using one of the big wires, one of the big power wires, because I figure it'll be easier to see everything. Maybe. It's so slow to focus, I don't know why. So yeah, I'm just going to use this, uh, it's about a 12 gauge, I think. Maybe it's like a 14. But, so you want to thread your wire so that the insulation just barely butts up against I just don't want any random threads hanging out ideally you don't want to twist the wire either but sometimes this makes it easier alright it's so like I was saying that little inspection window focus there we go you can see through the tiny little hole, you can see the copper strands. Uh, there we go. Maybe, maybe you can see that. You might not be able to see that. But anyways, you can. You want to make sure that the copper strands, you can see it through the inspection window. Uh, I like to leave a little bit of wire exposed at the bottom, just a little bit. Or you can butt it right up against. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, it's all going to be protected inside the connector. Uh, so yeah, it's all going to be connected inside the, uh, or protected inside the connector anyways. So, the other thing about these crimpers is there's settings for the gauge of wire you're doing or the gauge of connector you're doing. This controls how far those teeth inside, uh, clamp down. So I've got it set to 12. I'm just going to stick that in there. I'm just going to take the, the whole pin I'm going to stick that inside my, my crimp tool. And then, uh, I don't know why that's so wide. Anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and give her a crimp. Okay, I'm going to need both hands on this one. Give her a squeeze, let her go. And there we go. Now we have our our nice crimp. A little pull test. Yep, she ain't going nowhere. I could probably go a little more on that. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go through the process of getting all these guys crimped on. And then they simply just press through. Once you got everything crimped on, you just take your pin and you you just force her through the back there. And it locks into place and there you go. You got your connector built. So, so like I said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish getting all the stuff crimped together. And then, uh, yeah.
Alright, so what I've done here is I've put together an Excel spreadsheet with uh, all the ECU pinouts and with all my connector pinouts and all my different wiring colors and all that stuff. Uh, that way I can keep track of what goes where. So, the back of the connector uh, is A through probably A through Z. No, it's not that many in there. A through R, something like that. So I'm going to have my uh, switch power be pin B, all my ground, or D, E, and F. And then I'll just repeat that on the other side of the harness. Just mirror it. So B is... goes in, clicks in, and there she is. There we go, there's the first connector. This one's going to be a little more time consuming. This is going to be fun. Alright, switch monitor lamp, blah blah blah. Spark output 1 and 2. Green and white, I believe it's brown. So I'm going to be extra careful and make sure I get everything right because I don't want to have to redo this. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm using my meter in continuity mode. So that's green and white. All right, so I'm gonna be here for a while. Spark and put in. I just have to very carefully, uh, very uh, yes, yeah, very carefully get these into the right positions. So I'm not gonna record all of this because it's really tedious. So I'll just check back in with you when it's done. Alright, so here's the completed engine side. Uh, I could have did this in one harness, one plug, but some of the gauges, uh, the gauge wire for power I used were a little too big for the pins I had for this this connector, so I ended up using this guy. Um, this would be great because I can use this to populate other things if I need to add more stuff to the 
I don't know what else I would need to add, but any type of power stuff would be nice because I'll have this big honking connector. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Needs to be cleaned up a little bit. When it's installed, you know, to wrap around here somewhere up under the intake manifold, plug into the firewall somewhere. So, uh, yeah. Obviously, still need to do the the ECU side. But same process. That, that's everything to make the engine run right there.